of a function to sketch the graph of this function. And of course, you can see the first bracket is finalized, but the second bracket needs some work. Is of course a cubic function, um, and we need to reduce it to two brackets, which is not easy, so to speak, because you will talk about which two numbers we add, they give us a one, and we multiply, they give us a two. Those numbers are not there, they don't exist. And therefore, we, we get a bit curious because this could be one, one of those functions that do not have a solution. So let's see. Dealing with the quadratic part, uh, we may talk about x is equals to, if you're dealing with the cubic part, we may talk about x is equals to 1 uh, plus or minus the root of 1 squared because b is 1. Of course, this is negative 1, negative b minus b minus 4a, which is 1, 1c, which is 2. And it is the discriminant that I want us to concentrate on. And I'm going to just extract it here. 1 squared is 1 minus 8. This is, this is a negative 7. And we all know that there is no square root of negative 7. This one does not exist. So it is very important to note that this part has no solutions. That part has no solutions. And if it has no solutions, then the only bracket that can give us the critical value of x is the first bracket. And x is only equals to positive 1. And if we need to sketch that graph, so that is positive 1. It's one part, it's one point where the graph passes. But we could be interested to know where does the graph cut the y-axis. The graph cuts the y-axis when x itself is equal to 0. So we have negative 1 in the first bracket, 0 minus 1, negative 1. In the second bracket, you have 0, 0, 2, and it cuts the y-axis at, at negative 2. So that is another point through which the graph passes. So it is critical to remember that as x tends to be negative infinity, y tends to be what? Negative infinity means, of course, we consider any value of x that is to the left of 1, which we have already considered to be 0, x to be 0, and we have seen as x tends to be negative infinity, y tended to be negative infinity. So, as x tended to be negative infinity, you can see, uh, we considered when x is going to be 0, and we found that y is simply negative 2. <clears throat> As x tended or approached positive infinity, y approached what or approaches what? We need to consider any value of x that is to the right of 1. Let's say 2. So the first bracket gives us 2 minus 1 is a 1. The second bracket is obviously a positive because we are going to have 4 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 8. And it's going to be positive 8. So as x tended to be positive infinity, y tended to be positive infinity. So what kind of a graph are we talking about? We are talking of a graph that looks like that. We are talking of a graph that simply looks like that. 
you can again see that this graph cuts the x axis only once and the y axis only once. It doesn't mean it is not a cubic function. It's only that it has only one root. How do we know it's a cubic function? If you open this bracket, these first terms, x times x squared is already x cubed. And that qualifies the whole function to be a cubic function. So it, it is not a must that the cubic function cuts the x-axis three times. It can cut the x-axis one once. It can cut the x-axis twice uh, or even the three times. But all of them are a cubic functions. And therefore, it is important that you note that. These critical points are very important, critical points, and also the y-axis intercept. But to know all this, it is important to consider as x approaches negative infinity, how does y behave? As x approaches positive infinity, how does y behave? You will never go wrong. Okay?